Assalamu alaikum sir. How are you sir? Uh, I am fine. Waalaikum assalam. Sorry for the delay. I went to get my earphones. Acha. Now nah, hopefully I can hear hear everyone's voice. It's damn uncomfortable, but okay. Okay, so we ended with hydrates, right? We ended with hydrates. Correct? Yes, sir. No. So, tell me. Yes, sir. Anna, in the hydrates, the last point that we saw. Was melting point correct? Melting point and no, oh, sorry, bond angle. I guess bond angle. Bond angle was done, na? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the uh, bond angle was what point? F or G? F. 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 Okay, so G point, you're right. Acidic strength. Yeah, thank you, sir. You said we would be starting acidic strength. Acidic strength, na? So yeah, I'm starting acidic strength only. I'm starting acidic strength. Okay. So we have hydra acid here. Okay. So any hydra, what are hydra acids? For example, H two O, H C L. These are called hydra acids. So if you have any non-metals plus hydra acid, sorry, non-metal plus hydrogen means hydra acid. Hydra acid. Okay. So what are these? You will have a non-metal in it plus a hydrogen atom. These are known as hydra acid. Now, to check the strength of hydra acid, you can have you can be asked to compare in period and in group. So when you have you have to compare in period. So in a period, what changes? The electronegativity of Central uh, sorry, the electronegativity uh, the electronegativity of central atom it changes significantly, right? So you will say that in a period, acidic strength is directly proportional to the electronegativity of central atom. Okay, electronegativity of central atom. But in a group, but in a group, what happens? Acidic strength is directly proportional to the size of central atom. Okay. Now, basically, if you want to uh, describe both of them and generalize it, what is happening is the acidic strength. You have any acid that is H A. Okay. So it will react and it will give what? It will form H plus and A negative. Now, this H plus will be same if you are comparing along the period, but this A negative will be changing, right? So the capacity of a particular uh, central atom. To hold down, hold this negative charge. Okay, if it can easily bear the negative charge, that means it is acidic. Now, if it cannot bear the negative charge, that means it is not acidic. So, electronegative elements they can easily bear the negative charge. That is electron. That is why they are more acidic if we are going along a period. But when we are moving down the group, what happens? Size matters because if we have a negative charge in a small size, the electron density is very high. But if we have a negative charge in a very large uh, atom. That means it is dispersed over the whole air, uh, volume, and hence it is more stable. Okay, so we are looking in a group that is right. One more point: as size increases, as size increases, what happens? The bond dissociation energy decreases also. Correct, and we have seen that. What H two Te? It is what it is. It has most weakest bond, right? It has most most weakest bond. That is why if bond dissociation energy increases, sorry, bond dissociation energy decreases and release of H plus becomes easier. Okay, so as size increases and also the stability of Conjugate base increases. I hope you are accustomed with the idea of conjugate base. What is conjugate base? Can somebody tell me what is conjugate base? No, this is an acid. And whatever is left after the H plus has been uh, released from the acid, it is known as conjugate base. 
which is known as conjugate base okay so what will be the acidic strength we have h2o then h2s then h2se then at last h2 p okay please write this down then we will move forward to reactivity of oxygen okay did everyone understand this okay nazira and sania are also here assalamu alaikum good afternoon walaikum salam sir good afternoon okay uh, did you all understand this sir what is bde decreases bond dissociation energy okay. we have discussed the bond dissociation energy now in uh, the, that was that was the i guess the first point in reactivity towards hydrogen in hydrides first thing that we discussed was bond dissociation enthalpy or energy okay let me know when you are done did all of you went go acha did all of you go to school so why school so it's online ah uh, i mean did you attend yes sir, we attend no class no class today no class abir is saying he, he attended abir you, you attended Thursday. Yeah, one more time, say it, please. Sir, I attended Thursday, I'm saying. Last class. The last class, okay. Sanya is done. Okay. Mariam, uh, there were no classes today, so Saturday is off for you guys. Yeah, Saturday yes, and Friday. For now, it is off. Saturday and Sunday is off. Friday also off. Yeah. Yes, not Sunday. Okay, not Friday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday. Acha, 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 acha. Okay, my bad. Okay. Let us move on to second point. Oh, sorry, the second chemical reactions. Reaction towards. Acha, acha, acha. Okay. 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 Okay, reactivity towards oxygen. So reactivity, if we form oxygen, then it will form what oxides. Okay. So we will be looking at the oxides of group sixty. Oxides of group sixteen. So group sixteen can form two types of oxides. They are known as the dioxides and trioxides. Dioxides and dry oxides now if we have oxygen what are the compounds here oxygen sulfur then selenium tellurium and we have what polonium okay now if i add o2 to both of them because dioxides o2 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 and o2 so this is what oxygen and o2 so we can write this as what o3 okay we can write this as o3 so we will discuss o3 uh, in a separate as a separate topic because this is important but please remember that ncert has written o3 in dioxides okay it has written o3 in dioxides now except oxygen all of them will have what plus 4 oxidation state correct because since oxygen is making bond with itself that is why we can determine its oxidation state but all the oxygen molecule will have different oxidation states okay and different formal charges here all of these here will be what plus 4 oxidation state uh, if you are writing about trioxides they will have plus 6 because the if some compound has three oxygens that means it will have the oxygen has minus 6 charge that is why it will be plus 6 the center atom will have plus 6 charge so trioxide we can write see there will be no trioxides for oxygen because plus 6 oxidation state is not possible but we can have for sulfur that is so3 similarly seo3 and we will have pe o3 again we will not have for polonium because of inert pair effect and also because it is very reactive okay also because it is very reactive so please complete this line this give a star mark here because we will be learning about ozone as a separate topic
Yes, sir. Done, everyone. Yes. Yes. Done. Okay. I think I can move on. Yes, Mariam, done? Yes, sir. Now write a few remarks regarding these oxides. Points that you have to remember. Number one point is SO2 is a gas, but SeO2 and TeO2 are solid. Why? Because see what happens as the size of atom increases. We have learned this in the group 15 elements. As we increase the size, what happens? The pi bond formation. Pi bond formation, the capability to form pi bond, it decreases. Now, when the pi bond, when a compound cannot form pi bonds, what it will do? It will start to polymerize, right? We have learned this idea previously also. What will happen? It will polymerize. That is why if, if we have something which is polymer, that means it is it will be having a, some long chain. Now, if we will have long chain, its molecular weight will increase and that is why it becomes solid, okay? So, this is the reason SO2 is a gas but SeO2 and TeO2 are solid. Why? We write this in a bracket. As the size increases, pi bond formation capability decreases, tendency to polymerize increases okay tendency to polymerize decreases so write this in bracket like this now what happens sulfur has very small size right a sulfur will have a small size and that is why it can easily form bond with oxygen that is double bond with oxygen that is the reason sulfur is small in size Hence, it can easily form pi bonds with oxygen. It can easily form pi bonds with oxygen, but selenium and tellurium are large in size, are large in size and they tend to form more single covalent bonds. With network structure, with what kind of structure? With network structure, okay. So you can be directly asked in assertion or reason that SO2 is a gas, but SeO2 is a, uh, a solid. This can be the reason here, okay. And if this is not the reason, then you can put that the assertion is right, but the reason is wrong. Okay, so many of the assertion reason types of question can be made here. So Fatima is here. So Fatima, you need to screenshot these two slides. Can you please screenshot it, Fatima? Yes, sir. Done? Yes. This one done. Yes. What about okay? Now we are here. This now second point is SeO2 is SeO2 is reducing agent. But TeO2 is oxidizing agent. Okay, now if SeO2 is a reducing agent, what will happen? The oxidation st state of selenium, it wants its oxidation state to be higher, right? That is why it is a reducing agent and it will itself, it will get oxidized and it will reduce other. It will get oxidized itself and it will reduce others. Okay, so what is happening? Selenium's higher oxidation status 
more stable now this is the reason that is from the inert pair effect okay because t is down the group and selenium is above it that is stability of plus 6 oxidation state is more is more in you can write this as is more in the the top periods so if you have higher period that means uh, it will be plus six oxygen state will be more stable from top to bottom stability of plus six oxidation state decreases hence peo2 doesn't act as reducing agent as te plus six is unstable due to inert pair effect this is due to inert pair effect so write this slide let me know when you are done Oh God, you are taking so much time. Write fast, please. Done. Done. Done? Okay. Are, are. Who left? Fatima got disconnected. What about Mariam Sanya Nazira? Done? Yes, okay, fine. They are done. Somebody sent a chat. Okay, Sanya is done. Okay, thank you, Sanya. Let us look at the acidic nature, okay? Acidic nature of the oxides. So this will be what points? Third point now. Acidic nature. Now we know that if we have a non-metal oxide, they are acidic in nature, right? Non-metal oxides. Are acidic. in nature if we compare the if we compare the dioxides we have so2 then seo2 then teo2 and then we have poo2 polonium oxide now all of these are in plus 4 oxidation state now what we have to look now if the oxidation state is same we have to look at the smaller in size if somebody is smaller in size that means it will be having higher acidic strength okay now if i compare between so2 and so3 okay now here the charge will matter because here it is plus 4 and here it is plus 6 now here what they are asking you see the sizes are the same but the charges here are different so whatever is having more positive charge will get more acidic strength okay? it will be more acidic strength complete the slide then we will start with the oxy acids of sulfur okay so these are the same concepts that we have learned in the p block uh, sorry the group 15 elements 
there we learned about the oxides of nitrogen mainly and here we are learning about the oxides of sulfur and other group 16 elements also yes sir done, done. abir maryam nazara yes sir okay yes sir done See, I hope. Yeah, uh, I guess we have discussed the acidic strength, na? I think I have wrote, uh, given you this oxidation. First of all, we see the oxidation state of non-metal if it is directly proportional to the acidic strength, correct? Then, if this is same, then what do we see? We look at the size of non-metal. Now, if we are comparing the size of non-metal, it is inversely proportional to the acidic strength, right? In group fifteen. Yes, I guess. Right, acidic strength of non-metal oxides. Yes, I remember that we did just after the uh, we did in the remarks of night. Can somebody please check it in the remarks of oxides of nitrogen? Just we have after we have finished the oxides of nitrogen, na? Then I gave you some remarks regarding it, and in that we discussed about the acidic strength. Can somebody please check it? Yes, sir. Yes, na. Okay, fine. Sir, there are two steps. First, two is... steps. So, in see in the here, what we are seeing here, we saw that the oxidation state is same in each of these oxides. So we check the size. Now, when we check the size, the sulfur is having small size, so that is why it is highest. Then selenium, then tellurium, then polonium. Now, in this case, what is the difference? The difference is not in the size, rather the difference is in the oxidation state. So, whichever is having the higher oxidation state will be more acidic okay guys yes sir yes sir clear okay thank okay so we next we have the acidic or oxy acids of sulfur i don't know this is this is the third point in oxides i don't know what point we are looking at now so then just writing like this okay oxy acid of sulfur Okay, oxy acid of sulfur. First important one is sulfuric acid. See, if you see your uh, NCERT textbook now, they have it is a very small portion that is oxy acids of sulfur, and they have just given everything in, I guess, in one paragraph. They have not discussed it very much. They are given all the structures of only four oxy acids, but uh, the number of oxy acid they have discussed is, I mean. they are not just four there are many oxy acids of sulfur okay so we will learn all the oxy acids of sulfur and we just have to know the structure and its uh, basicity or how much uh, proton it can give so we will start with the simplest one that is sulfuric acid the formula is h2so4 how will we draw the oxy acids of sulfur now for oxy acids of sulfur you first draw the sulfur then draw the the OH number of hydrogens uh, no 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 just draw oh okay how many oh bonds the number of oh bond is equal to the number of hydrogen atoms if there were three hydrogen atom i would have drawn the 3o so this is the first step and now just add the double bond oxygens okay so how will step one is number of oh bonds is equal to number of h atoms in formula okay in the second step draw rest of oxygens now this is only when we have one sulfur atom now if we will have or uh, two sulfur atoms or three sulfur atoms then we will have to look at the oxidation state okay so please draw this this is easy okay right now one point that we have to write about is it is di basic or we say it is diprotic okay now what is the oxidation see what is the hybridization here the sulfur has how many surrounding atoms nazira can you tell me how many surrounding atoms does sulfur have here two 
हाउ टू वन टू थ्री फोर ओके सो इफ इट हैज फोर सराउंडिंग एटम्स दी हाइब्रिडाइजेशन विल बी एस पी थ्री ओके हाइब्रिडाइजेशन इज एस पी थ्री ओके आर यू गैस डन यस सर ओके फाइन सो मूविंग ऑन देन वी हैव सल्फ्यूरस एसिड बी Sulfurous acid is H two SO three and H two SO four. Now we have H two SO three. So please start. Uh, please uh, keep writing with me, okay? Because there is no new concepts here. First of all, we will make two OH bonds. Then we have only one oxygen. That is why this will be double bond oxygen. And there will be one, two, three, four. There are four valence electrons which are making bonds. We have two more valence electron here. Okay. Now what we will do? We will Calculate just hybridization. Hybridization is equal to number of surrounding atoms plus the lone pairs. We have three surrounding atoms and one lone pair, so this will be equal to again four, which is equal to sp3, and this is again dibasic. Please write with me, okay? Dibasic or dipropic. Now I don't know. Yeah, Fatima has not joined as of yet. Got disconnected that time. Now, next is thiosulfuric acid. Thiosulfuric acid. The formula here is H two S two O three. Okay. Now you remember this term, which is thio. Thio. When you will add thio? Thio is added when? When there is two oxygen. Sulfur. Oxygen is replaced by sulfur. Oxygen is replaced by Sulfur. Okay, so we had this structure now, sulfuric acid. So we will draw everything same. We will just remove one of the oxygen and replace it by sulfur. So we will have sulfur, OH, OH, double bond O, and here we will just put the double bond S. Okay, is that fine? Now what is the uh, S? This is this will be sp3 as it was earlier. But this here sulfur is having six valence electron. Two of them are involved in bonding. We have four more. That means two lone pairs. Now the surrounding atom for sulfur is one, but there are two lone pairs, so two plus one is equal to three. Now three leads to sp2 hybridization. Okay, so the sulfur which is on the terminal, which is not the central central uh, sulfur, it is terminal sulfur, and it is what sp2 hybridized. Okay. Now also remember one more point I have told you earlier also, but again remember this when we are drawing. when there are two central atoms when there are two central atoms and odd number of oxygen then the structure is then the structure is aoa correct we have aoa bonding except we had n2o3 And oxy acids of sulfur. In oxy acids of sulfur, we will use some other concept. Okay, so also remember this point. Write this. Then we will discuss this part. What will happen if we have oxy acids of sulfur? How will be the how will be the bonding taking place? Okay. हो गया आप लोगों का. Are you guys done? No. No. Okay. Uh, this point is not important. We have discussed this again in the oxides of nitrogen also. Oxides of nitrogen also. This is the third time we are discussing it. When there are two central atoms, odd number of and odd number of oxygen, then the structure is AOA except N2O3 and oxy acids of sulfur. Yes. Also one. done okay also one more thing is that today we will have till 5 o'clock only okay and i think i will ask maybe we can uh, reduce the number of hours since your schools have started and also we are all, i mean after p block we just have one chapter that is biomolecules there's a very short chapter we can finish it in two or two classes as i think 
So I think we can reduce the number of hours for your classes as of now. Let us see. But today we will end at five, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, no problem. And so before thiosulfuric acid, na? Let us write an uh, uh, oxy acid. Then we will discuss this its structure. That is D, na? It is pyro sulfuric acid. Pyro sulfuric acid. So how is pyro formed? We have two molecules of the parent oxy acid. That is H two SO four, and we remove what? Minus we remove H2. one. Yeah, minus H two. One molecule of H two is removed, so we will get H two S two O seven. Right, guys? Yes. Now we have. Okay. Now we have to find the structure of oxy acids of sulfur with two central atom. Let's write a point here. Structure of oxy acid of sulfur with two central atoms since here also we have what pyrosulfuric acid we have two central atoms okay now there are three cases there will be three cases now you can either have oxidation state is equal to 6 oxidation state of sulfur equal to plus 6 or you can have oxidation state oxidation state of sulfur is less than 6 is less than 6 and sometimes you will see oxidation state is also greater than 6 okay so sometimes if you see oxidation state is greater than 6 Now, what are the cases? If the oxidation state is equal to plus six, it will be equal to A O A bonds. If it is less than six, then it will be A A bonds. And if it is greater than six, then it will have some per oxy kind of linkage like this. Okay. So when you have this type of structure, the oxidation state gets higher than plus six. Now let us first start here and write the oxidation state for sulfur. So when we calculate the oxidation state for sulfur, it will be equal to for hydrogen. We will take this as how much? Hydrogen will be plus two. Yes. Plus two okay. x minus fourteen is equal to zero. So two x is equal plus to twelve. Yeah. X is equal to plus six. Okay. Now we have what kind of uh, situation here? We have ah uh, A O X. So the structure will be something like this: sulfur. oxygen sulfur then we will have two hydrogens now so one oh with this sulfur one oh with this sulfur and how many oxygens do we have seven oxygen one is of okay, three are done so four more double bond o double bond o double bond o double bond o okay so this is again what di basic or di protic please write this down also if we uh, see uh, if we have odd number and we have aoa bonds that would have also worked here right because it is similar kind of structure here. that would have worked here but in some of the cases we would see that that concept it doesn't work for oxy acids of sulfur this will work everywhere it may yes, that yes. aoa kind of thing it will work in 85 or 75 type times but 75% times but this if you learn this it will be 100% right okay yeah. can i move on abir maryam nazra yes somebody said no sir no yes sir let me know abir okay when you are done Done. Acha done. Okay. Next is E, which is pyrosulfurous acid. Pyrosulfurous acid. How will we make H two S O three twice again minus H two O? This will be equal to H two S two and O five. Correct. This is H two. S two and 
5 oxygens. Now, if we calculate the oxidation state here, it is 2 plus 2x minus 10 is equal to 0, 2x is equal to plus 8, x is equal to plus 4. Okay. Now, x is equal to C. Here we have what? Odd number of oxygen atoms, right? But if we write this type of structure, it will be wrong now. We have to have A A bond. So the structure will be sulfur with a sulfur here. There are two hydrogens, so one hydrogen. OH here, one OH here. Now we have how many oxygen atoms remaining? Three oxygen atoms now. So double bond O here, double bond O here, and a double bond O here. Okay, don't worry. See, sulfur can have this lone pair. Okay. See, its octet is already complete. One, two, three, four, five. Right. So here it has it, it has more than octet. I guess one, two. It says, yeah, it has more than octet. Okay, so don't worry about it. If it is less than eight electrons, then then it will be unstable. So and both of these are sp three. Okay. It has no lone pair, but it has four surrounding atoms. It has three surrounding atoms, but one lone pair. Now, what will be the basicity? Is di basic. Please write these things with me. I know these are the other all. One should be sp two, right? It has one. Oh. It will not be sp two. Okay, so yes, okay. Got it. I know. Next, that is E. We have F. As per oxygen, case if we did A O A O N here, it will be wrong. How? Huh? How? Because this is experimentally determined structure. It does not have this type of bonding. That is why it will be wrong. Got it? Yes. For oxo. Monosulfuric acid or oxo monosulfuric acid. It is also known as caro's acid. It's known as caro's also. The formula here is H2SO5. H2SO5. Now, here we have sulfur, then we, are, uh, we have hydrogen double bond O, double bond O, make one OH. And this is per oxo. So peroxy linkage is how? Peroxy linkage. This is the peroxy linkage. Peroxide, you know the formula for peroxide now. Right? This is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. Now this is what? Per oxo monosulfuric acid. So you remove the hydrogen and replace it with the rest of the structure of sulfuric acid. So this is OO and H. This is the structure here. So we can just write OH, right? Double O, no, OOH, na? And like OOH. OOH. Ah, you can write yeah. that. Yes, I done. What about others, Abir? Yes, I done. Mariam Nazra. Yeah. Okay, everyone is done. So, what will be the basicity here? Mono basic. High basic. Mono basic. Yeah. Mono basic. Mono basic. How many OH? Only one na? that is directly attached to the sulfur. Right. Basicity will be one. Mono basic. Next, we have. Uh, this first F, so this will be now the G. Peroxo disulfuric acid. Peroxo disulfuric acid. This is H2S2O8. Sorry. H2S2O8. If you calculate the Oxidation state here. What will be the oxidation state? C. Eight, and there are how many hydrogens? Two. I ah, uh, you uh, more than seven. I mean, it is more than six. Ah, it is it is seven, so it is more than six. Two plus 
to x plus minus 16 equal to 0. So this will be how much? 2x is equal to plus 14, x is equal to plus 7. Now if we have plus 7, that is uh, that means we will have sulfur, oxygen, oxygen, sulfur, double bond O, double bond O, yes, okay. OH, OH, double bond O, and double bond O. Okay. You guys in, so also remember this. This is one of those acids now, which are give, which, whose structure is given in the NCERT. Okay. So, so see sulfuric acid, sulfurous acid. It, uh, it has been given. Okay, let me mark those now. The structure has been given. So you give it more importance. This structure has been given in NCERT. Structure has also been given in NCERT. And there is one pyroform. Where did we write the pyroform? Pyrosulfuric acid. Pyrosulfuric. Okay, this structure is also given. Okay, there are four uh, sul uh, so oxy acids of sulfur whose structure has been given in the NCERT. Okay, now uh, we have got peroxo disulfuric acid. Achha, this is also uh, one of the, its name is Marshall's acid. It's Caro's acid and Marshall's acid. Next, write H. Dithionous acid. Dithionous acid. Okay, the formula here is H2, S2, O4. If you see the oxidation state, the oxidation state here will be it will be plus three. Okay, you can calculate it. It will be plus three. So the uh, if it is plus three, the bonding will be SS bond. Double bond oxygen here, double bond oxygen here. There are two OH, so one OH here, then one OH here. Now, is there anything remaining? No, there is nothing remaining. So all of them, both of them will have one pair. Okay, so this is dithionous acid. Dithionous acid. What will be the basicity? Dibasic. So why dibasic? 2 OH, right? But they are connected to the separate S, right? Ah, so what happened? I mean, this is one molecule, that, na? so they, they will be asking about the uh, basicity of molecule. So can you remove a, like previous page? Hmm. Why is this? No. Why is the F1 monobasic? It has two OH. No, it has only one OH that, that has been attached to the sulfur. And what about the other OH? It has not been attached on any sulfur atom. Okay, so you, we should add that on sulfur, then it will be done. Uh, the the non-metal. If it is attached on the central atom, that is non-metal. See, both of these are central metals, huh? central, uh, central atoms, correct? Yes. Uh, that is it should be attached on the central atom the previous page previous page yeah see here in pyrosulfurous acid also we have got how many dibasic on uh, this this thing we have been discussing from the oxy acids of phosphorus here yeah. yes sir clear clear okay done with this one yes sir others abir mariam Yes, sir. Okay. Now we have a series of acid which is known as thionic acid. Okay, this is important. Thionic acid series. Now here the general formula here it will be H two S N. O6. So there will be two hydrogens and there will be six oxygens. The number of X, it will differ from 2 to 5. It so will differ from N. Yeah, the N, not X. The N. And it will be 2 to 5. Now let us start with 2 here. The first one will be what? H2, S2, O6. 
So this is how many sulfur? Two sulfurs. That is a dithionic acid. Just see its structure, and the what you will do is just keep add sulfur in between. You don't have to do. See, uh, if we have sulfur and sulfur double bond O, then we will have. Let us first write the OH. OH double bond O. We have to do AOA, right? Like oxygen is just. Oxygen is. Number of oxygen is six, right? So. One minute. Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. Now see, in this thionic acid series, just remember that we have dithionic acid with this structure, and this structure will be same. Okay, in the further acid that is trithionic acid, tetrathionic acid, pentathionic acid. What will be different? What will be different is the number of sulfur atoms between these two sulfurs. Okay, so this is dithionic. Just see B here, H two, S three O six. This is trithionic. Now, how will be trithionic acid? Trithionic acid just add a sulfur in between. Sulfur, sulfur, sulfur. The terminals one will be same. OH, double bond O, correct? Double bond O, OH, and double bond O. Add a lone pair here. Okay, add a lone pair here. Now, what is the difference here? See, all of all of these sulfurs are how much? What is the hybridization in all of these sulfurs? All of them are sp3. Okay. This sulfur has four surrounding atoms. This sulfur has four surrounding atoms. This sulfur has two surrounding atoms and two lone pairs. That is also equal to four, which is equal to sp3 hybridization. Next, we have A, B, C. This will be H2, S4, O6, tetra. Ionic acid. Please write with me. Okay. Now Ahmed is also disconnected. Kya ho raha hai? Thiri thiri sab ja rahe. See here, H two S four O six. Now here we will be having S double bond O and O H as it was before. Then sulfur. Then one more sulfur. Then sulfur. Then one oxygen here. O H bond here and double bonded oxygen here. Now the last one which is D. Just H two, S five, O six. This is pentathionic acid. A pentathionic acid will have sulfur, 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 and one more sulfur. Here. Five sulfurs here. Double bond. Okay. So we will first write the OHs. OH double bond O, double bond O, and double bond O. Okay. So please write this. Let me know when you are done. Sir. Yes. Sir, here rest of the sulfur atom are having lone pairs. They all have lone pairs. I mean, we we don't ex explicitly show every time the lone pair. For example, oxygen here has four lone pairs. Okay, but we don't show it. Just write it. Part, okay. Yes. Sir. Okay, what about others? Nazira is done. All of these oxy acids are in NCERT. I am not teaching here any JE or NEET syllabus. Okay, so if you see your notebook, uh, see your textbook of NCERT, it has, I guess, it has just has four to five lines. But in four to five lines, it has listed all the sulfuric acid. Sorry, the oxy acids of sulfur, but it has not given the structure. Okay, and also because see, NCERT is not a self-study book in the sense that it needs a teacher. Or it is not a reference book in which you will get everything. So it is, it needs some guidance. So that is here the structures. Okay, everyone is done, I guess, right? No sir. No or yes? What did you say? No. Okay, you said no. Okay.
Yes, Ahmed, please write it, write this down. We are on the same slide. Ahmed done. Okay, Abir is done. What about Ahmed? Let me know when you are done, Ahmed. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. So we are done with oxy acids of sulfur. Okay. Not as much as we had in the see number is more. That is the oxy acids of sulfur. They were less, but they were more important. Sulfuric acid we have too much, but we just have to remember these structures here. Next is reactivity with halogens. So I don't know which number. It, I guess this is the fourth reactivity, fourth and reactivity, but still let us see reactivity. With halogens. So first point that we will write is the group 16 elements, they form many types of uh, halides, halides of group 15. Sorry, group 16, not halides of group 16, yes. Now, halides of group 16, they form hexa, they form tetra, and they form di, and they also form mono, okay? So, they form different types of halides. Group 16 elements form the following halides. Okay, the first one is now in hexa they just form fluorides. Okay, now they don't form hexa bromides, etc. We will look at its reason, but just write here hexa fluoride. Second is tetrahalide. Third point is what after tetrahalide we have dihalide. Fourth one is monohalide. Fourth one is monohalide. Okay. So we will write some remarks regarding these things. The first point is they can ask you why is only hexafluorides possible? The statement is in hexahalides, in hexahalides only the hexafluoride. Is possible only hexafluoride is possible why see as also they can also write sf6 is possible but not scl6 sbr6 or si6 okay these are not possible Both of these statements can be made and you can be asked to <coughs> explain it. The reason is due to the more oxidizing nature, oxidizing power and higher electronegativity.
higher electronegativity of fluorine higher electronegativity of fluorine it can oxidize sulfur to its maximum oxidation state okay to its maximum oxidation state okay but what happens with chlorine but chlorine has low oxidizing power that is op oxidizing power okay low oxidizing power and it can't oxidize sulfur to max oxidation state okay to max oxidation state is this point clear do you remember that point that is bif5 correct it is it is a similar point here fluorine it was not there was nothing role of bismuth there okay the only role was there for the fluorine why the fluorine is more electronegative now we know that uh, if we form scl6 then we will have to use that valence that electron of s subshell which is inert there now this chlorine and bromines and iodine they are not electronegative and neither do have neither do they have that type of oxidizing ability to get that inert pair reactor but fluorine is highly electronegative and it has what it has more oxidizing power that is why it is able to oxidize sulfur to its maximum oxidation state okay guys so it is similar to that point we have written regarding the bif5 okay, please copy this see all of these points will be similar okay as we have seen okay. also uh, just below this now just below this write one point order of stability order of stability we have sulfur f6 then we have what selenium f6 and we have tellurium f6 okay, now we have to compare the stability which is more stable SF6 will be more stable than SEF6 then TEF6. Why? Because here we have what is uh, sulfur? It is 3P and 2P bonding. Here we have 4P and 2P bond. Here we have 5P and 2P bonds. Okay. 2P and uh, 2P 3P bond will be more stable than 4P 2P and then 5P 2P. Write this point also in the same year. Next point is something that we have also discussed in the P block sorry group 15 elements that is regarding hydrolysis what was not uh, what was not able to hydrolyze when we were learning about the halides na halides of group 15 there was one element which was not able to hydrolyze what was it hmm which halide Are you guys done? Yes, I am. Okay, so in highlights of group 15, we have seen NS3, and then we had NCL3, NBR3, correct? Then NI3. In that, NF3 was not able to hydrolyze. Okay, so there are two conditions for hydrolysis that I have given you. Two conditions. The first condition is one bond and atoms should have vacant p orbital first let us write the statement here then we will again discuss see you sab bhul jate hai aapko padwa rahe nahi hai you guys are not reading daily na that is why you are forgetting these things the point is sf6 is not hydrolyzed not hydrolyzed what right is the reason here see for hydrolysis the first condition is that one atom should have vacant orbitals so we see that sulfur it has it is uh, in the third period so that is why it will have a vacant orbital but the second condition if you remember it is just that what is the second condition the second condition is less steric crowding okay less steric crowding that is why SF6 is not hydrolyzed because see sulfur is what sulfur is 3p so you can imagine that sulfur is of this shape okay 
then it has how many fluorines six fluorines around it so fluorine is second period it not it will not be very much smaller than it i can say it is something like this correct i've drawn it very much smaller than the three if i draw the 3p and 2p let us say it is something like this okay now it will if it will have six of these type of circles around it there will be no place for the lone pair of oxygen to attack the sulfur correct that is why due to this steric hindrance SF6 is not hydrolyzed. SF6 is not hydrolyzed. Why? Since sulfur, since the sulfur central atom is hindered by, hindered by or that means crowded by, you know, hindered by fluorine atoms, six fluorine atoms. Is hindered by six fluorine atoms. Now, next thing is rate of hydrolysis. So, if we compare this, so when we compare the rate of hydrolysis, SF6, SEF6, and TEF6, sulfur, selenium, and tellurium. So, tellurium has the highest, I mean, the largest size. So, if it is very big, it will have some vacant spaces in between to get the fluorine to get the uh, lone pair of oxygen oxidize the tellurium atom so this will be the fastest this will be the slowest and this does not it doesn't even hydrolyze so it will be the smallest okay the rate will be smallest for sulfur now what is the size effect here size of central atom increases rate of hydrolysis increases rate of Hydrolysis increases. Do you guys remember this point? Yeah, bhool gaya apro. Hydrolysis two points. Yes. Ahmed, Abir, Maryam, Nazira, Sanya. Oh, no one remembers na. See your notes. You have written this point. Condition for hydrolysis. In that day, that day I have given you example for SF six also. I told you about SF six also. Okay. Uh, please keep writing with me okay please keep writing with me there are not much explanatory points here okay see hydrolysis we have explained it previously also we have learned it previously also next thing is regarding its hybridization and its shape so sf6 is we have six surrounding atoms that is a sp3 d2 hybridized This SF, uh, SP3D2 hybridize and octahedral in shape. This octahedral in shape. So, you will draw the structure of SF6 also. One more fluorine will be here, okay. Complete this slide, please, first. I don't draw this other dots, okay? It is of no use. Let me know when you are done. Complete this slide, please, first. Now, this is what? This is from 11th standard. So, P block is easy. P block is easy. Similar concepts are repeated every time. But, it can be also tough. For example, if I say there are Primarily, we can say there are 10 concepts. Now, with this 10 concepts, you can solve 50 questions. Okay, you can solve 50 questions. But if somebody doesn't know this 10 concepts, then they cannot even solve, they cannot solve 50 questions. Now, these 10 questions, they, these 10 concepts, they are interrelated. So, if you are learning 5, that doesn't mean you will be able to solve 25 questions. It means you will be able to solve only 10 questions. Okay, so P block elements, read daily read daily practice the reactions by writing okay 
practice the reactions by writing you are very ahead of the i mean the exam schedule if i tell what are they teaching you in class now this p block is done na in your class no sir no hmm? sir to kya un logo ne aise seminar topic de diya now they are teaching esterification esterification alcohols yeah yeah but they have completed uh, electrochemistry and uh, chemical kinetics i guess no sir only chemical kinetics acha to we are not much back with i mean acha and now yeah. if they have given you if they have given you the seminar topic for uh, their school has given you na the seminar topic so they will yeah. teach p block or they won't teach p block now they will they teach. won't they won't teach na teach yeah wow so they are they are paying you no yes yeah yes yeah tumhare teacher ne say ten words for the exam oh, uh, can you please repeat that mariam teacher said that this chapter carries 10 marks ha ah, exactly and she gave us a seminar topic i'm i'm telling you. that means uh, this p block it even makes teachers cry to tum log ke upar thok diya unhone but see you know, these are very simple concepts okay and the uh, also see if somebody has uh, fear for maths and fear for calculations and do they do silly mistake this is the this is the chapter in which they can score and they can they can score very good they can score very good if you don't uh, see electrochemistry or ke- see chemical kinetics not there solid state it has concepts also some theory part also and some calculation part also okay so solid state i like that chapter if you read it you will get some points in that but electrochemistry and chemical kinetics they are purely numericals okay they are purely numericals now if you fear that then okay fine just read those concepts theory should be in your mind what is happening when uh, in chemical kinetics and electrochemistry but for scoring p block is good for you okay p block is good for you now what is the, the thing is that if you learn it you will score it but in numericals if you do a silly mistake even if you know the concept and you do a silly mistake then no marks so this is a very good chapter if you want to score now we are done with what we are done bhuli jata hai sf6 ka okay we are done with the structure here we are done with the structure here. okay now in halides if i ask you the order of halide of group 16 the stability order okay for tetra okay and let us first write that amongst write this with me amongst the tetra halide amongst the tetra halides sf4 is gas SeF4 is SF4 is gas. SeF4 is liquid. And what P F4 is solid. P F4 is solid. This is the first point. Now, other point is regarding the mono halides. Okay. mono halides of group 16 dimerize okay and form what can they form see if we have sf they can form s2f2 okay if we have scl they will form s2 cl2 if we have sbr they will form s2 br2 okay now similarly if i have secl i will form se2 cl2 okay they are dimerizing here and then se2 br2 okay those these kind of compounds you will be seeing in mono halides and there is one reaction for mono halide which is they dimerize and form these type of compounds mono halides this is important okay They have asked CBSE has asked this question. Mono halides of group sixteen form, not form, show 
disproportionation reaction this proportion nation reaction so if we have something like se2cl2 and when we heat this we will get se cl4 that is the tetrahalide and we will get se now if you want to balance this do this force so it's chlorine is balanced we now have to balance the selenium so now selenium is also balanced now please write this halides are also done okay so these are these are small topics in what is important is first of all this one there is only one reaction in halides this is important and also this point that sf6 is not had realized these two are important points in the halides yes sir okay what about others abir nazira yes sir now comes some important compounds of group 16 in some important compounds of group 16 the first one that we will learn is what did we learn in nitrogen we learned dinitrogen so here we will learn dioxygen dioxygen okay so why do we need to prepare dioxygen zarurat kya pad gayi oxygen banane ki just to protect from uv rays क्या हो गया द पैंडेमिक बैच एंड इट डज नॉट नो द इम्पोर्टेंस फॉर डाई ऑक्सीजन India suffered a crisis for dioxygen during the months of April yes. and March, and okay, okay, fine. So dioxygen, the if you see, there is not much uses uh, for dioxygen given. But if somebody asks you, then you can directly say it was used in where for patients, na, who are suffering from, they can be suffering from some. What do we say? What diseases are those? Lungs disease. But is there any good word? for example heart disease has a very good word cardiovascular diseases respiratory diseases <laughs> respiratory diseases yeah okay so dioxygen the other thing is that we also use dioxygen uh, in chemical reaction for example if we want to do some reactions na in which where we have some controlled uh, uh, we have to give oxygen in a controlled manner for combustion so there also we use dioxygen the first we learn about its method of preparation what is mop method of preparation the first preparation method is heating of kmno4 or kclo3 or kno3 okay so you see method of preparation you will not be you will not see you, do, you just have to identify for this examination you just have to have to identify so don't worry ki bhai itna sara reaction hai sab chhod ke chal jayenge please read this okay read this daily see you don't have to learn it you just have to recognize in the examination okay when you key heat kmno4 you will get k2mno4 just someone knows the reaction one the reaction okay. kmno4 you will get k2mno4 plus mno2 plus o2 now if you balance this is this balanced tell me if we have kclo3 
Yes. Nicely heated, we will get KCl plus O2. KCl O3, I written KCl3, KCl O3. Now we have to balance oxygen is three here. So we will do a two and three here. And we can do a two here. Is this balanced now? Next one is KNO3. Heat this. We will get KNO2 plus oxygen. So oxygen is three. So we will have to do two. Please keep writing this with me. Heating of oxides of less reactive metals. Okay, less reactive metals. Less reactive metals, for, for example, mercury and silver. Both of them, mercury and silver, they come in chapa. You remember chapa? No, yes, sir. Uh, reactivity series uh, Ag2O. You just heat this. You will get Ag plus O2. Next, you have HgO. You heat this. You will get two Hg plus O2. Right here, two. Is this balance? Yeah, this is balance. If I write two here, I have to write four here. Now this is also balanced. Next, you will write heating of higher oxides. A, B, C. Heating of higher oxides. Higher oxides, for example, P3. Oh, sorry, not P3, PB3O4. PB3O4, when you heat this, you will get lead oxide plus O2. Okay. And you have PBO2. You heat this, you will get again lead oxide plus O2. And if you have, for example, peroxide H2O2, you will get H2O plus O2. Okay. So balance this or just leave it here. Don't worry. You have got three methods here. Yes, done. done. What about others? Done? Sir, in the last two reactions, we will not heat. Let me also star mark a few which has been directly given in your NCERT. These have also been given by the way. Done? Done, done, done? Yes, sir. Okay. Now properties. Method of preparation is done. Now we will be looking at properties. Properties of oxygen. So oxygen is things that you know already, colorless. odorless okay colorless and odorless now what is the sol solubility of uh, oxygen solubility is not never asked okay. and then it reacts with most of the metal and non metal except noble except noble metal what are noble metals it are et and a we have written the same point in hno3 also we have written the same point in hno3 also correct yes sir enough now what it will form if it react It reacts to form metal oxide. Uh, oxides. Uh, if it, it reacts with both no, no, metals and non-metals, so it 
forms oxides. Okay, just write general oxide. You have uh, you have many reactions, but I don't think you need to write those reactions. For example, if I add calcium and O2, you will get what? CaO, correct? For example, if you have aluminium plus O2, to react these two, you will get Al2O3. You have phosphorus plus O2, you will get P4O10. Carbon plus oxygen, you will get CO2. Okay, so these reactions are there. You can just write this if you want to. Next, we have to learn about its uses. Okay, so uses we will obviously write first things are that. See, uh, respiration and combustion. These are the most important things, right? In respiration, without oxygen, we cannot uh, breathe. And without oxygen, there cannot be any combustion also, okay? So respiration. Combustion. Okay. Now, combustion is used in almost all of the manufacturing processes, right? So we cannot uh, list everything. We'll just write especially in steel because steel is another very large industry in which combustion is especially in manufacturing. Of steel. Also, you can write uh, respiration and you can the same point you can write in hospitals. and high altitude skydiving and deep sea diving order list taste list okay fine taste list also Is a gas also correct? Can I move on now? We will just do okay. We will just do the sulfur dioxide, its method of preparation. Okay, then we will done. Everyone is done. Sorry, it's nearly five years. Have it is uh, very small now. Method of preparation for sulfur dioxide, even its properties is very small. You just have to write it, okay? You just have to write it. Sure. It's very small. Next one is sulfur dioxide. In sulfur dioxide, the first method of preparation that we will look is sulfur plus oxygen. Sulfur plus O2. What will you get here? The sulfur dioxide. Yeah, sulfur dioxide. Second method of preparation is with FeS2 plus O2. It will give you Fe2. O3 plus O2. Again, properties. Also, because we have seen these properties, right? It is what? It is acidic because it is what? Oh, sorry. This is not O2. This is SO2. Sulfur dioxide. Sulfur is a non-metal. It's oxide. That means non-metal oxides are acidic. So it is acidic. Now, sulfur dioxide is also polar. Colorless gas with pungent smell. There is a bit of pungent smell and sometimes it is also known as burning sulfur smell. Okay. So if it, uh, you have been asked about a compound which burns with sulfur smell that is sulfur dioxide. Second point is so it, is, it is polar and it sulfur dioxide will have 
lone pair electrons these lone pair electrons can form hydrogen bonding with h2o molecules that is why it is highly soluble in water highly soluble in h2o due to formation of hydrogen bonding due to formation of hydrogen bonding so wherever you have if you have lone pair electrons which can easily coordinate with the uh, positive charge of hydrogen it will be highly soluble in water it is reducing as well as oxidizing agent as well as oxidizing agent okay complete this slide we are done we will just do some uh, reducing properties regarding the reducing properties of so2 in the next class that is tomorrow yes sir okay what about others abir nazira yes sir everyone done oh, yes sir yes sir thank you sir thank you bye bye